part for as long as I can remember. I grew up in an artistic family. Um, ever since I was young, my dad and my mom were putting paint in my hands. They used to let my sister and I like paint on the wall of the house. Um, we were in our, I remember one time in our basement, we were like, <laughs> we were an expressive family. But um, yeah, the dad, my dad said my, our, the basement was ours to just, you know, have fun. So it became like neon pink and green. Um, but that was young. And ever since then, I just felt like, you know, this is like, I love this space. I love being in this space. Um, creating makes me feel like more my, like myself. And my dad has just encouraged it as much as he possibly could. My mom doesn't draw, my dad does, so he would try to teach me all he could, and then I took that and ran. Well, you, you, your, uh, your dad, does he have an artistic background? No, he, um, so we're a big Marvel family. Oh, so Marvel comics. He grew up drawing comics. Um, so I, he, he would give us, like, he has all the old school comic collections, like, it's amazing. And he would be like, pick a character, draw this character, bring it back to me, and we'll go over it. I'd be like, okay. But it would be like something, some intense moment like with the Hulk and he was like doing something crazy and everything's breaking and there's like, and he would break down to my sister and I like, okay, this is what you should do and stuff like that. So, um, what types of images do you like to paint? Um, my favorite thing is probably women. I think women are the most interesting characters to draw. Um, Women have all different body shapes and maybe all different colors. Our hair is all different ways. Um, so for me, women is definitely the most entertaining um, piece for me. And then next to women is probably like animation or cartoon. So do you have you have you classified yourself as a particular artist yet? No. So uh, do you do beyond painting images of women and and I think you said cartoon characters. Have you, have you tried painting other things like abstracts? So I've done an abstract piece before. I loved it. Um, I've done pop art before. I've done landscape before. Landscape is not really my thing. Um, but why, I've done it. Why is that? I, I don't. Um, Some creativity in it? It's not that. I just don't feel connected to it. Okay. Um, like when I see a piece, I can appreciate it for what it is. But if it's me sitting down creating it, I don't feel connected to like painting a scene that I'm looking at. Now, but behind us, that's, that's, that's hanging is a, a, a piece of your work. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I can see the, uh, the cartoonish mm -hmm. animated part of the work. Uh, but I, 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 what I find interesting is the, is the background. Mm -hmm. um, you just chose the white background and you put this in the front. Is, is there a reason for that? So, the character, the bigger character that all the characters are in, this is He's a call, like K-A-W-S. It's like a, I don't know, it's a trans-urban character that is yeah, a to a, a, what we call it, I don't know, old, 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 old Okay, let me think. Um, <laughs> when you talk about something that might recognize. So like, for instance, you know how Disney has Mickey? Yes. And you know the character of Mickey Mouse? Yes. Calls is a part of the brand that that's their character. Okay. So the person, because this, this was a piece that somebody asked for, um, they just said that they liked Paul. And I was like, well, do they like cartoons? And they were like, yeah. So the original, this is the Paul's character looks like this. The inside of him, when you fill in, not fill in, you'll see him every different color possibly in the world. But I figured, I wanted, when you looked at the picture, to see the characters first. I felt like if I did a background too, it would be taken away from the film when we were trying to picture it. Okay. And orange is my favorite color. So this is becoming my favorite color. Orange is becoming your favorite color? Yeah. Definitely the second. So do you do commission work? This yeah, I just work. Um, and of the, of the works that you've done over the many years that you've been painting, uh, is it commission based? Is it creative based? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? So now it's creative based, thank God. But when I was like broke in college, it was all <laughs> commission based. Like, I used to do a thing where I was like, I'll just do a portrait for $100 and we'll flip it. And I remember for Christmas one time, I had 10 portraits to do. So I'm broke in height that I have like $1,000 about to come. But I gave myself like three weeks money, finally and all. So I was like, but I was so like money motivated that I was like, it's cool. I'll just kill myself for three weeks for this $1,000. 
But now that I'm an adult and have a, a sound mind, I don't, um, it's more so like I just want to, I can't step on it if I'm not feeling creative because um, then I feel like I'm doing the person a disservice um, because I'm not, if you can see in my work, if I'm not in a space to be creative, it shows. But I will make random pieces of them like say you can purchase it, you can go to my website and reach out to me and say you want to finish a piece. And then we can have that conversation and see, you know, I'm the right artist for you. Um, but now it's strictly how it's just strictly creative based. And then commission me second. Why did you have um, did you why did you, you still do commission pieces? Absolutely. Okay. But the money's not my motivator anymore. What is I just feel like now, what's my motive now? Yeah. Now I just feel like um, I, I, I just have to, I, I'm a very moody person, so sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, but when I'm up, I just get these creative sparks, and when I get there, I'm like, you know, I'm in a good space to do a piece that this is where, like. So the, the many artists I've met over the years have their quirks. Okay. Um, uh, artists are not complex people, but they are quirky people, so. What I mean by quirkiness is that uh, they paint at different different hours of the day. Okay. Some if some artists will paint in the evening. Some artists will paint in the, in the wee hours of the morning. Mm -hmm. and some artists will paint whatever whatever grabs you. So so, what's your process? I um I work I'm a, like I did this piece in I did it like two and a half days straight. Like I just called out of work. And I just was like, I'm gonna just paint. Um, and for me, I work better at night. Um, I have an iPad, so I'll usually sketch my idea. Like I'll lay in the bed, and I'll be like, you know, that actually works for me. And then I'll just sketch it out. Um, and then like there's certain people who like, for instance, right now, like, there's commission pieces that I'm working on, and I'll like sketch it out. And I'm like, this is what I thought of. Is this okay? Like, is this a, you know? And then they'll say, this is, you know, we'll go over situations and colors, but. For me, if it's around like 2 p.m., 2 a.m., my mind is working. So you see, you sketch it out. Is it, is it ever time you, when you approach the canvas and just start painting on it? When I did the abstract piece that happened and it, and it came out well, usually for me, um, I, I like to sketch it first. But I think that's what my dad taught me how to sketch things first. Why? Is it because your dad taught you that? Like my dad. I always started with sketching. Like painting is more new versus sketching. Like I've been drawing a lot longer than I've been painting. Um, I don't know, and I, I changed my mind so much. So I feel like I get frustrated if I started painting and then I was like, you know, I don't want this person to be on this canvas. I actually want it to be something else. Like this picture, there's probably like six sketches before it got to this point. And so, because I, I was thinking of it as I was going. And also, like working on the iPad for me, I can alter things and take this out of here and maybe add what I thought I used to want. So I can put the, all the thoughts together on like one piece, and I'm like, this is what I like. So, what, what mediums do you use? Are you a oil based painter, uh, acrylics? Um, all acrylics. I have my first oil base right now in my house that is taking like four days to dry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the criticism that most artists say. Oh my gosh. Forever. Forever. Um, they have the smell that never goes away. Right? It's just, it's the worst. But I love, I like when you touch a piece and it's like this texture to it. And I know with the, with the acrylic, you have to like kind of just do more to get that texture and oil is so much easier. But I feel like blending with acrylics for me is smoother, like the color transitions better. But I'm now starting to like dabble in oils. Um, it's, it's not selling me because it's just taking so long to dry. So you uh, mentioned that you uh, called out work once before to get a finishing piece. Yeah. Uh, so what do you do? First, what do you do besides painting? Oh, well, it's actually, I work nothing with art at all, actually. But I work in the mortgage industry. I'm a mortgage processor. Okay. Um, but that's not the job I called out of. <laughs> I used to work in banking when I, my first job out of college was working at a bank, and I just like I just called out and I'm like I just need to do. So you went to Bloomsburg University, right? Mm -hmm. And what was your major? Uh, mass communications and traffic public relations. So did you ever uh, uh, intend to 
You're going in this going in this direction where there's pain. Where I'm at? Yeah. No. No one's actually like that. When I went to college, my goal was to represent athletes. I always felt like if I couldn't play in the NBA, I could represent the NBA. Oh, you just play basketball? I just loved I I loved football, but my parents literally they said no very early today. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just gonna represent athletes. Um, and I felt like I knew enough people around me at the time. I'm like, you're gonna go to the league, I'm gonna represent you. I got this. And then um, just as time went on and my life went on, it just wasn't it wasn't the opportune thing for me. Then I my first job out was the bank. And I was like, I'm actually really good at finance. And then I went from banking in person to now working mortgages. And it's like, I'm not gonna lie, it's a very good career, but honestly, it's not my career, but it is a good career. Well, let me ask you this question. Since you mentioned uh, uh, your, your background, your, some of it being in finance, having worked in the bank, uh, there's, there's a saying that artists um, should stay on the creative side and let place like the Booty Jones Gallery represent you on the selling side. Do you agree with that? No. No. Because I feel like um, I, I know this is a little bit more women that matter to more women, but that's, that's a thing. I feel like um, as an artist, because I, I used to be the artist that would be like, if you would ask me for a commission piece, I would give it to you whatever price you can afford. You know what I mean? I was that person all the time. Oh, well, you know, you can, well, Lizzie, I want this extreme piece, and I only have $100, but I know the material alone for this piece are $100. And I'm like, well, that's what you can afford. So, but now I'm, um, you know, time is currency, uh, talent is currency. Um, I'm a believer that as an artist, working around so much money and finances for um, a couple years now, there's, there's people who are willing to pay for the things that you do. Um, we don't, as artists, we're, we're not, I mean, I get that, like, we're very expressive and stuff, but at the same time, we're providing a service that I think definitely deserves to be. Well, so, so we'll, we'll speak to the issue. Uh, how, do you, how do you, for example, uh, uh, there are pieces here at the gallery, and, I, and artists will come in and they will say to me, well, this is what I want for this piece. Mm -hmm. uh, that want, uh, how do you determine what that want is? I think, um, so my first thing I fact, when I make a piece, like I was like, for instance, for this piece, I factored in how much my bake, excuse me, how much my paint costs, um, how much the canvas costs, because canvas aren't cheap. Um, and then I gave myself an hourly wage. And I was like, so after I put those things together, one, is it a practical number that comes up at the end of this? Um, and usually I try to do it to a point where it's like, yes, I do understand that, um, the average person isn't going to spend an absurd amount of money on pieces, but there are people that will, you know? So I think you need to make a number that you want, a number that you're willing to settle for, and then any number above that will blow your mind and any number below that is unacceptable. Well, let's talk about those people who, who you believe can will pay uh, a, a fairly decent price uh, for, for a piece of work. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you see yourself in that marketplace? Um, I think I'm transitioning to that marketplace now. Because um, now I have clients that are just like, make the piece, I don't care about the price. So, but I think that happens when you get your first client that's like that, and then they refer you to like-minded people. And then it's your job to, you know, work that scenario to your favor if you can. Now you've been on this journey uh, for a while now. A long time. Now, uh, you, you, you know, people will say, well, she's an emerging artist, uh, but you've been doing this for, what, 20 years? Yeah, actually, yeah. So, so you might be considered uh, a more seasoned emerging artist. Okay. Um, so, do you associate yourself with other artists? Uh, for example, uh, to participate in other joint shows and uh, and if you do something like that, do you try to identify the types of artists that you want your work to be associated with? Um, no, I, cause I, I like to keep it open. Um, when it comes to different artists, anything is fine with me. Any place is fine with me. I feel like anywhere, any place you go, any place you're invited to, any person you meet is an opportunity. 
you just don't know when that opportunity could lead to. Because what if I say no to, you know, what if I said no to this? And I mean, there's somebody that's watching that guy can honestly change my life. You really don't know. I don't, I think it's very uh, close minded to kind of just turn yourself off to certain groups or places because you might feel like you're either above or past the place. I don't think that's right. Is your audience uh, 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 that you're trying to appeal to with your work, uh, is it is it particularized to any ethnic group or is your wide open to whoever is interested in buying your piece? I'm open to whatever. I do realize that, so my, my main um, buyer is black male um, who's around the age of 30. They're like my number one clientele. How did that happen? I think because um, from my experience, um, whenever I go to situations or shows or something or I show my work, like when I talk to the women I ran into, like they'll tell me they like my piece, but like the type of guy that I meet, they'll, they'll buy it. And then they'll put it in their house and their friends will be like, oh, I went to my friend's house and then I saw this piece and I figured I'll reach out to you. That's how it's worked for me. In a perfect world, I would have all races and all genders, everyone. So I'm trying to figure out how to broaden my horizon, but the problem is, you know, your you're, you're reach is as far as the people that surround you, so I'm trying to um, expand my reach. It's interesting um, uh, that you, your work appeals to, 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 the, to the male as opposed to the female, mm -hmm. uh, because one of the things that we know that people say to me, well, what, what male or female who buys the work? Uh, I would say in most cases it's the female. Really? Uh, it's, yeah, the men who come will always say, well, I gotta go home and check with the missus. Okay. You know, that's their excuse. Okay. And then if they come back, um, if they come back. Right. Women on the other hand tend to, I like it, they don't say I'm gonna go home and check with my, my husband. Or right. My, Significant other, they just okay. say I'm gonna get it. See, most of my buyers are bachelors, so I feel like I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, making pieces for bachelor's head. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, like I know this is sitting in the middle of a bachelor's head, um, and I'm trying to think. The piece I'm working for right now is for a bachelor's head. The piece I just sold is for a bachelor's head. Um, so you sell so the pieces for family pads? Have you? Or is it just tricky? Um, I've made like family portraits, but I don't make those anymore. But I have made family portraits before. Um, usually around the holidays, people will ask me for stuff like that. But I don't enjoy making family portraits. Why? I'm not connected to it. Gotcha. It's not my family. So you have to feel your work. I have to. Or you don't feel it. Like I don't. Oh, that's that's important. That's important. Do you? Uh, because you've been doing this for 20, 20 plus years, do you uh, consider yourself a, a person that you would give other artists some advice? Uh, I'm, and have you been approached by other artists? Because yes, I've been approached. Okay, and, 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 and what is it that they tend to want to know that um, is missing in their work or that they think they should be doing with the work that they're doing? Well, the younger artists that I meet, um, I think they, the thing that they skip that I've noticed is the basics. I think we live in like a time now where like everybody wants like the end result. You know what I mean? And it's like, do you know how many classes I've taken just drawing circles? And mm -hmm. how many hours I spent drawing boxes? And you speaking to the millennials now. Yeah, because I, I, everyone that taught me how to draw, they're in their 50s and above right now. Um, I've drawn plenty of circles. You know what I'm saying? Like I. So tired of drawing circles, but now I can almost draw a perfect circle without needing, I don't need to trace it, you know, I can literally draw a perfect circle, but that doesn't happen from the, you know, all of like, for instance, if I were to come into here and see all these beautiful pieces, I'm sure everyone here's first piece did not look like this. It takes time, like if there's a craft that you're interested in, you have to invest in that craft. If there's no shortcuts to your craft and if I, I can look at a piece and be like, yeah, they don't know how to draw a box. Or um, you, there's sometimes, you know, there's, there's some pictures you can see that they weren't really going for it to be like structurally sound. But when you look at other pieces, it's like, I actually think you were 
trying to make this space what makes sense, but you don't even know how to draw a box and you're not putting the person in the room and furniture in the room to know what it's supposed to be. So tell me, um, uh, who out there do you, who works that you, that you admire? I um, don't get your inspiration from more you sometimes in this, so I wish I could paint like him or her. Paint like him or her. So my person that I wish I could paint like, um, you guys know Chuck Stiles, who's from Philly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love his work. Every piece he makes, I wish I could have his own. Like, but I will go find all his pieces, but I love every piece he makes. Um, I like the way he uses color and creates tones. I just think it's so beautiful. Um, and then he has this signature, it's kind of like, um, it's almost like a dot of the colors and then like swipes of other oranges and like fuses blue. And I just think it's done so effortlessly. The colors just blend seamlessly. Um, another person I like, her name is Christina Martinez. Her name is Sue Trill on Instagram. She's polar opposite from Chuck Stiles. But she's more like, I don't want to say, I, I guess it's like an abstract. She has, she like has these characters that she's created and she constantly remakes them in various ways. I think they're beautiful. Um, and then besides that, I mean, I love Van Gogh. Um, but when it comes to like the big artists, like people are like, oh, I love Monet. Like, I'm not like that. I just like, there's certain people, like there's people I know that are friends that they have become my favorite artists and I just love that. Um, do you uh, frequent museums and Places like that, and, and have you traveled and uh, and seen other works that have inspired you? So I've been to Philadelphia again like 400 times. <laughs> it's to the point that it's like my chill space. Um, I on Do you guys know about the thing on in the summertime? It's like every first Friday of the month they have that art gallery downtown. I do that every single month. And then um, when I go to different cities, my best friend she knows all of art. And she was like, "Do you know there's like an art section in this city?" Or my friends will send me art stuff um, to go see a Starry Night by Van Gogh because I know that's in New York. Um, but I've never been to that museum before. I've just been to like shows, local shows, um, shows outside the city, but nothing like museum-wise. I haven't been to many. So, so we, we've been in this pandemic now for a year. Yeah. And and and, and how are you how are you uh, favoring or functioning uh, with your work? Considering the circumstance, it means that you can't uh, participate in, in live shows as much as you would like to, or, or, or uh, art fairs, etc. So, have you came up with an alternative way of, of promoting yourself? So, I think Instagram is like the world's best friend. I think Instagram is amazing. Um, so, over the pandemic, my sister's best friend, she makes, she does uh, public relations and makes websites. So I work with her, she works with three work at her company and she was like, sat me down, like it's time. You need to go on the internet and get your stuff together. You can't just be doing DMs every five seconds. You have to get a little more formal. But I, um, actually the pandemic, I did this thing where it was, um, I was trying to do like a free promotion type thing. So I was like, send me a picture of you, I'm gonna make a picture of you and I'll send it back to you within a day. And I did that like probably like 20 times but over a while, you start picking up momentum for stuff, um, and I realized that helped. Did that, did that work? It did. So folks would send a picture, mm -hmm. and, and, your, and, and you would send them back a, 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 a painting of A digital. Oh, a digital. Because everything was closed, so I didn't have time, I didn't have the supplies. So that's when I started heavily leaning on my iPad during the pandemic, and I would be like, um, give me a picture of you, I'll clip it within a day. You know, it's interesting because recently, I think it was this week, there was a, a digital piece that was sold uh, in Japan or in some, some foreign country for a gazillion millions of dollars. Yeah. A, a totally digital piece. It moved. It doesn't move. Uh, that I don't, I just caught a glimpse of the story and they paid for it with that, what's that new currency called? Crypto? Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. They played like a a hundred, two hundred million dollars in cryptocurrency yeah. for the digital piece of artwork. Yeah. So I'm interested. It's interesting. Uh, it, you see that, uh, I, you know, as a person who's been around art for well over forty something, if not longer, years. I just can't see the digital piece going. I mean, 
so let's see, let me ask a question this way. Nelson, you're more doing your own thing. You're not relying on people calling you and saying, yeah. you want this to so, so do you think of, of how your piece may fit into a setting when you start? No. Not at all? No, not even for a second. Okay. I don't even think about what room it could apply to. I don't think about my, uh, I don't think about the buyer for it. Um, I just know in my own, like, I just know mentally that I have a client base for something I'm gonna make. But I don't think like, you know, guys mostly buy my pieces. Let me make something that probably would be appealing to guys. Um, I was more so, I'm making this, chances are a male is gonna get it, but I'm not in the house like, you know, I really hope somebody puts this in their living room. Because if, I don't know, the space you have to, to decorate in your house. Do you, do you engage with the buyer? In other words, uh, uh, with the, now that you have a different approach to how you produce your work, uh, if, a, if a person is interested in a piece, do you speak to them about, well, I, if you're going to put it here, then I think you might want this piece as opposed to no. that piece. You like, if you like it, you can buy it. I agree with that. Yeah, that's correct. So you don't try to force nothing on the Absolutely person. not. That's not my, my responsibility is to make art. Good, good. That's it. So do you, do you see this, do you, do you see this as a, uh, a, a career that you want to pursue full, full time? Absolutely. And at first though, when I want to, um, so what I'm trying to gauge to like gear to now is I want to, there's so, somebody told me about being a corporate artist. Um, so basically where you get affiliated with various like architects and um, art buyers and I want to be the person that provides art for like maybe a new restaurant that came out or maybe a new hotel and then you're talking to the architect about it in the process of making the building. You get a, you are, it's your responsibility to create the atmosphere with your piece and I would love that and you can definitely have a very good living off of that. Um, that is the absolute goal to just supply our pieces for restaurants and hotels and maybe even an office building. You know, when you walk into an office building, it's like that huge piece, and somebody had to make that for them. So I want to be that artist for those moments. Do you think that there are obstacles out there that 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 a because you're black, two because you're female, that that you're that you have or will have to deal with going forward? I feel like, for me, intellectually, I understand those obstacles are there. Um, but I'm a very, like, strong-willed, aggressive female. Um, so I, the idea of an obstacle is entertaining. That's fine for me. I don't feel threatened by an obstacle. Um, I think I'm a very personal person. So I'm the type of person, I know this world that who you know is, is more important than who you are sometimes. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you come in here, let's say you went to school for art, you have all these accolades and all this stuff, but if I know the buyer and I can talk to the buyer first, I've now outdid you in that scenario. So for me, it doesn't matter about um, race or my gender. If it, all I have to do is create the right relationships with the right people at the right time. And I'm just a believer in what's meant for me is gonna be for me. And nobody can do an opportunity that was already supposed to be for me. Um, I think the biggest obstacle that I've ever had is with myself, not with other people. Oh, when you say with yourself, what do you mean by that? Like, um, not, I not believing that you're that you're a good artist or it's not, that, that, yeah. is that your work will, will appeal to yes uh, people who who will spend more than a hundred dollars, so to speak. For yeah, me. like I remember my first piece that I sold that was like, like when I say it blew my expectations of what a commission was. And when he purchased my piece, because he's like, he's a, um, I don't call him a friend, but he knows me well enough to know that sometimes I doubt myself creatively. And he was like, now that this is, was sold, this is your base price. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, you know somebody's willing to spend this on your piece, this is your new base. And he was like, you don't disrespect yourself by going in this base. And I stayed at that base. And I was like, oh wow, look at that. People really do. Go well. and, and honestly, what you think is sometimes I, what I had to also learn was what you think is, you know, super expensive or what you think might be too much is someone's like bare minimum budget and you don't know, but you can't close yourself off to, 
I was basing a lot of stuff off of where I currently was in life, or what I could afford, or what I could do, or what I could see. But there's people around me that are seeing and doing and spending a lot more than me, so I have to sometimes get out of my own head of, you know, like maybe this is too much, maybe you're requiring like, but no, it's, it's actually not. So if, if you if you put uh, put on a show, mm -hmm. and let's say you assemble like 20 pieces, now you're in the, the room with the people who are participating in the show, that means by that is, is potential buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. what, what, how would you position yourself in that circle? And I, I guess what I'm getting at is uh, uh, selling yourself to make your work be sold to a possible collector. Um, I think, I think when you... I let, me, let me say this, okay. because I know there's some artists that are quiet, reserved, mm -hmm. and you gotta kind of nudge them on and say, look, that person's looking for that piece, so you need to go over there and talk to them. And mm -hmm. they'll say, well, you're selling the piece. I said, but they want to talk to the artist. Yeah. Because all I can say is, the, this is the artist, this is how much it costs. When they start asking, you know, some people are like, well, how do you do this? How do you do this? Why, why this? Why that? Yeah. And I can make up something. But I'm not, I'm just making it up. Right, because I'm trying to get the piece out. I'm trying to get the piece sold. <laughs> yeah. But the artist has to yeah. engage. So, what's your approach to something like that? I think, well, I'm the complete opposite of shy. I'm not shy at all. Um, but I also, like if I see somebody looking at something like, I, I don't want to push too hard. But if I, I make myself available through organic conversation, I think that's my, that would be my approach. I would just work it around. And you know, making sure, and I'm here, I would work my friends too. I would go to my friends before this event. We have a game plan, you know what I mean? Like, I need my friends to be engaged with the pieces just like I am. And, and I know how my friends are feeling, like they are like that. But where they see you standing here, I don't need to work this piece because I know they're going to help me work it. Um, my friends, they go a lot harder for pieces and stuff than I personally do myself, but. I just think if you are getting with some people, conversations can get you so much further than like you really think they can. Um, if you can make somebody laugh, if you can make somebody laugh, I've learned if you make somebody laugh, like you really have an attention and their attention, and if they'll remember this interaction, and they will feel more inclined to do stuff with you. You know, it's interesting. You know, you got a lot of maturity in you for for an artist mm -hmm. because uh, uh, um, I guess that you know you've been at it for twenty years, but. The same things that most artists don't say, and they've been painting for years, much, yeah. much longer than you. They may have started a little later in life. So your 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 benefit is that it's like playing basketball, for example. Yeah. You start when you're six or seven, then you become twenty-seven, you might be real good. You can do it for a while. That's yeah. right. So it's it's, a, it's it's you have a train, you've been trained uh, in this profession, which is a which is a benefit to you. Uh, and you should very much appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, sell me a piece of your work. What would you tell me if I'm looking at this piece and, and you know, I'm a, and I'm the kind of buyer that A, doesn't want to pay what the price is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> B, uh, uh, you know, want to determine whether or not if I buy this piece, mm -hmm. will, it, will it hold its value or, or will it increase in value? And see, you know, who else have you uh, 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 tried to sell to? Right. Things like that. That was just going to encourage you. So you know what? She's going to take you a shot. Okay. So one, I see you looking at my piece. I'm going to first ask you why you like my piece. What drew you? What drew you to the piece? Um, you know, you'll give me whatever. I don't care what answer you give. Whatever answer you give, I'm going to find an answer for your answer. So. Honestly, the most common answer clearly here would be one of the cartoons. Oh, I grew up watching this cartoon, or my grandchild grew up watching this cartoon. Then we're going to go into a conversation that has nothing to do about the piece. We're going to go into a conversation about the cartoon. Um, and then we're going to just be having an organic conversation about the cartoon so much that by the time you realize that we're having a nostalgic moment over here, that you're already getting connected to the piece, I'll explain to you how I like the piece. Like, hey, do you notice that people who don't like to spend money on things, they do like a lot of people like feel like they have exclusive pieces. Um, and then that's when I can explain, well, you know, this is a part of the series that I'm about to drop. And um, there's only going to be, what, so many versions that are going to be, you know, hand 
Cain is supposed to be the prince, but this is the first of many that are going to come out. Um, it's been a highly anticipated series that I've been working on for quite a while now. Suppose that's the role. I don't want, if I buy this, mm -hmm. I don't want nobody else to have it. I don't want to see it in print form or nothing like that. How do you respond to that? So my buyer for this was like that. Um, so he was the new There is no other color. This is the only orange piece that exists. The other ones are green, red, blue, black. There's no orange. This is kind of sucks because I think the orange will look that. Um, but I feel like that, I can respect that because I feel like that as a buyer. I think there's a way to make prints of having the picture without mocking, without having the exact picture. That's still prints because when I meet the other color, that appeals to a whole other group of people. So that's okay with me. Um, but for something, especially if, if I'm really trying to get sold, that's really okay with me. Um, if I'm being stubborn, then that's just going to be like, you're just not my buyer for my piece, and I'm at peace with that. Yeah, you, the buyers, I mean, some artists can be stubborn when it comes to pricing. Uh, uh, and one of the things I tell artists is, well, you got to have movement. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by movement, you got to be able to move with, to a number where it makes sense for that buyer who's interested in buying the piece. Right. And, you know, it, it comes with experience. And I, I have artists who will say to me, well, I don't want nothing less than X. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then the pieces here for a while, and they'll say, well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ask me, I'll say to, to that, that price, I think it's a bit, you know, too high. Right. Sometimes I tell artists that I think the price is too low. Yeah. And uh, so you got to be able to gauge that price. Right. Uh, and, and a lot of artists kind of allow me that kind of latitude. Are you the kind of person that if you went to a gallery, and the gallery only said, well, you know, you got 20 pieces here, and I'm going to move the pieces, but you got to allow me some wiggle room. Are you one of those types of like, no? No, I'm not like that. Good. So I look at it like, um, it's just like if you want to sell your house, right? You come in, you get your house appraised. They give you a value for your house, and, you know, as the owner, you know what you put into the house. You know the upgrades you put onto the house. You know the little knobs in the corner that you added to the, to the canvas that no one cares about but you. Um, however, you know, you do see value in your house and hopefully you're going to find somebody that sees value, but if a house that's been sitting on the market for too long is not, not as valuable as you once thought it was, and it does nothing but I would hope force your hand to be like, well, maybe the number I thought I was coming here with is a little high. Because if you ever see the house that's been on the market, it's been like, you know, 90 days, then it's like random, oh, we're coming back with like a $10,000 cut. Because now you have to attract the buyer that you turned off because you were too high. And just because, you know, people are paying lower prices and they're not interested in your work, or they don't want to support you, it's just that it's not, you are just not at the same price. If you're trying to sell me, um, if you're trying to sell me a Honda, but you're treating it like it's Mercedes, but I can clearly see it's a Honda, where it, there needs to be a different line of communication that needs to be explained there. So, um, where would, what would you say to a collector? Collectors to me can be defined in categories. There's mm -hmm. a want to be collector. Which are most. <laughs> <laughs> Which are most, right. And then there is the collector that's kind of in and out. Mm -hmm. And then there's you know a collector who I characterize as someone who's been buying art for I can see myself a collector. I've been buying art for years. Right. And I know a lot of our art based on my years of, of buying it and being around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm respectful to the artist at the same time. So right. um, how would you approach a season collector? Um, I think, well, personally, like I said, most of my people are younger, so I haven't had too many season collectors. Um, I just have to go into it with an open mind. Um, and I also have to understand that they, they probably know more than I do, um, like when it, in regards to the value of things, because they've been playing this game a lot longer than I have. Um, and I think, especially when you talk to people who buy from different artists, they have a better gauge of like the overall market. When at the end of the day, the only person I'm trying to sell is me. 
Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying I don't care, but the person sees next to me, that's not who I'm trying to sell. I'm trying to sell this to you. So, you know, it's, it's different when you can talk to someone that can look at things as like a totality versus an individualized situation. So I would be open-minded to that. Um, Cause I'm just very, I'm a very curious person. I don't think we left without having to get to talk to different minds. So I would just definitely be very curious of what someone like that thought of my pieces and my prices. So, so have you had shows here before up here? Not yet, no. Okay. I guess you're interested in having shows before here, right? I do want a show. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, shows require that you have a, a, at least 15 to 20 pieces. Yeah. Are you there yet? No. <laughs> Every time I make a piece, it sells. I don't have it. <laughs> so, like, like, I have to go to the person. I went to this person on Thursday. I was like, I know, listen, I just need it for one day. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I just need my piece back for just a day, please. But that's good that you, your work sells. I mean, yeah, but I don't want my work sometimes. Yeah, but you, 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 your objective is to sell your piece. It is, but it gets. And so what, what happens, what, what, make, what, what will make that not happen so quickly is when you start making your price reflective of what you believe your work is. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, you start saying, well, I want three, four, five thousand dollars for my pieces. It's going to slow down a bit. That's going to slow down a bit. But, but, you, but you may want to um, uh, put together a piece or two. Right. right. That, uh, might be worth that. It might be worth that. Yeah. You give that some thought. I have. So, I do want a canvas that is like the biggest canvas I've ever, it's like twice the size. So, it's the biggest canvas I've ever used. And I was like, I'm not, like, I'm not even letting people know that this canvas exists in my collection of white canvases. I'm just gonna create, I have like two ideas for it, but in my mind, I know it's at a good, it could be sold for something good. Um, but I have a couple of pieces. I bought, through this pandemic, it's actually weird, I bought probably like 10 canvases that have nothing on it. And if I can just commit to myself to not advertise them or sell them, I think I can get to a gallery in probably like a year and a half. So are you, do you have a studio in your house or your apartment, wherever you personally yeah. reside? No, right now. So, so, so when you move. Anywhere in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere. I'm about to um, move out my parents' house. And I know my parents cannot wait to, like right now, my kids are really having television. And my paints are in the basement. And my brushes are in the kitchen. and. I spray paint in this basement where I, the grass and my lawn has squares of the spray paint that I do with like clear. It's a mess. It's everywhere. That's it's interesting. Like, but your parents will allow you to be creative. Though. But like not at the same like they put like carpets in front of me. <laughs> and now I'm old enough to be able to afford to replace stuff. So they're just like I I would like drop paint on the carpet before and I'll be in there mixing the colors to try to get the color the carpet to like drop that color on top of it and I'm just like this is too much. <laughs> but you know, it's fun. So this is uh International Women's Month. Mm -hmm. Um um have you uh seen or see your work uh you said you like to paint women. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see yourself within that within that movement that you work? Um, there is a women's series that has been sitting in my head for a while. How long? Maybe like we're probably pushing like three years at this point. Why the sitting there? I have no idea. Um, I don't know because I don't know how so long. Like, so have so had you, had you sketched it out or just in your head? It's just in my head. Like the for the the big canvas I was talking about, it, it's a woman. I have the idea of her. I, when I say I vividly see her to the point that I probably don't even need to sketch it out because I see her, I actively see her in my mind all the time. And I just need to put her on the canvas. I know it's going to take a very long time, but I'm willing to just, I just want to put my face on her. Can you, I her can you give us like a hint? Um, so I want to pay homage to various cultures. Um, for me, uh, my grandma was very impactful to me. There's this one picture we have of my grandma. It's like, a, you know, the classic portraits we have of all of our like, family members. 
but she looks so elegant in this picture and I see it. But I know where we're from. So like for instance, on my mom's side, um, her dad's from Ghana. And I wanted to pay homage to like like women from Ghana and have the paints and the colors like kind of like a lot of color. Yes, emerging from her skin. Um, but I don't want to ignore the you know side of this woman that's been raised in America and how that you know has also been a part of her. And I want to kind of intertwine the cultures and um, just pay homage to the to the various pods that have poured into making my grandma who she is. Um, she has a very a very beautiful story of life, and I just wanted to reflect that in my first like homage piece. Yeah, I'm trying to put all that on the camera. Yeah. But I see how it's done in my head. Have you been to Ghana? No. People say that's an interesting. As a matter of fact, Stevie Wonder said he was moving back to Ghana. Really? Mm -hmm. So he said, I don't know if it happened yet, but, uh, but uh, I've heard folks say that uh, it's a, a, a the kind of country uh, that is good for black people. I heard that too. I've only been out of the country twice. I went to Canada for like Bali one time, and then I went to Bali, Indonesia last summer. Bali, um, Indonesia, that's a long flight. Very long flight. They have that interesting wood there. It's, I'm it's, not gonna lie to you. Wood like this, right? They have um, trees with the. Uh, it's all over. They have, I wish, if I was an architect, I would pull so many, like they had these huge doors that are like handcrafted and chairs, and I was like, I need all of this, but I would get that when I like have my home, home like my friend home. Um, it's just that was the first time I've ever been somewhere that literally took my breath away and like made me cry. Did you did you come away with any uh, creative ways of of, of, of of putting that trip on campus? Uh, no, that's landscape. Oh, that's right, that's landscape. No, you don't see eye to eye. No. But I bought some pieces and brought them back to my like to my dad because he likes different art pieces and I bought um, some masks and I gave those to one of my sisters. Um, but yeah, we were trying to like we art like it's going but so much. But we were buying little things. But I definitely want to go back there again. But when I go back, I probably don't have stuff on me. I will have my suitcase a little less next time. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I try to, uh, we try to be very supportive of, of artists like yourself mm -hmm. being in the gallery with uh, the young people. And, and I find it interesting um, because there's a lot of good young artists in, in, in Philadelphia area. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, and just tr trying to corral everybody and doing a big show just for emerging artists. That's one of the ambitions that I have. That'd be amazing. But you know, of course the pandemic kind of slows things up, slows it up. And the other thing is where to have. Right. Uh, and, and how to assemble it uh, so that um, we can get a fair a fair representation of those artists. So how many of those artists I'm talking about are included in this? Um, well, I, I definitely know painters. I know painters. Um, I have a friend who made this whole house in New York. It's insane. Really? It's insane. The like, whole house. The whole house inside is in New York. When you walk in, it's just like a continual piece of art that goes through the entire house. It's, it's a oh, loft. Uh, oh, it's a loft. It's so it's not, out, it's not upstairs, downstairs. So, you have to go upstairs to get into it and up the stairs from the steps to the railing to the wall to the ceiling. Everything is painted. How long did it take him to do that? It took him, um, I assume he owns the, the law. He's ready. He just moved. <laughs> he just moved. No, I was like, did you let that go? But um, the building got put out and they actually oh, knocked okay. the building down. They knocked the building down during COVID, but it was like, he would just, it, it would be a bunch of characters and, and women and uh, scenery, like people in clouds and meditating. And I was like, wow, I think it took him like two years to do. 
So is there a lot of creative people in this city? Yeah. All different types of work, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. So where would uh, uh, where would you tell folks to go to 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 see that? I mean, are there places in the city? I'm speaking to you because you represent a younger mm -hmm. generation, maybe up the millennials, and and where would you suggest they go? And to a certain extent, where you suggest a person like myself, one of one these old heads, mm -hmm. to go to, to see work like that? Um, I don't really. It's just there. I, I I always hear like small shows, and it's just like word of mouth thing. Um. I'm trying to get more engaged because I realize the artists that I find art in Philly on like social media or like that. Um, so I've gone out my way to like search for people in Philly. Um, there's a group, I'm having her erect Philly. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists go to Rec Philly and they, and you can see people through Rec Philly. I think that's an awesome platform that they have. Um, like if I would like to have a show, I'd probably put it like downtown or around like uh, or if I if not too far from downtown, because then I don't want to deter from any section of Philly. Um, but I don't know, it's all that word of mouth, you know, because I walked into like random things, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I walked into random things and I'm like, oh, this is a show. Like, this is a gallery that I walked into. Or um, I've been in situations where people have transformed their homes into galleries for the night. Um, it's just, it's honestly whatever people can make work. Things are so expensive, so I think people are getting creative with how they're displaying their work. That's true, if you, if you, if you, you know, in Instagram, there's always some some kind of pop-up or what's someone going on somewhere and throwing mm -hmm. out these places I've never heard of. Right, to be yeah. honest with you. And uh, I've art with artists that are mostly local artists that I've never heard of as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a wealth of art out there, folks, and you know, you just need to try to enjoy it. Um, so what more do you want people to know about you? Um, we didn't cover a whole bunch of topics. We did, we did. I think, um, I don't know, I just think I'm somebody that is, like, I don't look at myself as, like, some, like, iceberg artist or anything like that. Iceberg. I, I, extreme iceberg. I just like an extreme student at all times, how I feel. Um, just trying to always learn. But, I don't know, I think people can expect more pieces from me. Um, I've made a commitment to myself to, I don't want to like sound like morbid, but I feel like if you work on your mental health more, your mental health will reflect your state of creativity. And I feel like I, you know, as we go through life, we push our mental health back. And I think I've made it a priority to feel everything I'm feeling, go through everything I'm going, and experience everything I'm experiencing. And with that, I think pieces will come organically from that. So I just think anticipate more work that comes to me. Yeah, it's good, it's good to talk about mental health. It's, it takes that stress away from it. It does. Uh, and, and the artists, I've met some artists that, 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 that could be very stress, stressful because, you know, they get frustrated. I'm an artist. Uh, because <laughs> their, their, their work is not going to places that they think it should go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's an old saying that you just have to be steadfast. And focus, because you know it's, it's, it usually takes that one person or persons that come along and say, you know what, I'm gonna buy her piece. Right. And then that person may be somebody of significance. And then once one once one person buys it, right. And they hear this, that person got it. Then I'm gonna get one too. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's how it works in life. I, this it's funny. This piece. I've been painting random pieces for years, and I always believe that this, this takes, like you said, one thing to change the trajectory of everything else. And when I made this piece, um, I remember I posted it, you know, you post it, your friends post it, because they're getting friends. And I went to the space and I woke up, and I was like, there's like people in my messages like bidding for the piece, but they didn't know I already sold at the time. And I was like, oh wow, like, and I just needed that moment. But in my head, I was like, you know, you know, people will say, oh, she's 27, she's young. It's been painting for a while, though. Um, there's been a lot of painting before, like, there's, you know, I guess that quote-unquote painting. Um, and then that was my moment that I was like, oh, I actually think I might be able to do this. You know what's interesting about this piece? I, I, you ever, you heard of the Arte Hazel, right? Yeah. Oh, God, that's my dream. 
Somebody wanted to, um, to to contact you. How would they go about doing it? You got an Instagram page. You got a Facebook page. You mm -hmm. got all that social media stuff. I'm not a Facebook person. I should be more of a Facebook person. Um, but definitely on Instagram. My name is Tim. It's Lindy Love. So you got to spell that out. It's L I N N Y L U V underscore. And then from there, there's the link to my website, which is lindynicole.com. And if they went on, if they went on your website, what would they, what would they see? To see something without you? So there's about the artist page. There's um, prints available, and then there's actually a coloring page of this one too. Um, and then there is the option to, if you want to get a commission piece, like a personalized commission piece, you can reach out to me through there, and we can discuss, and then you can schedule a time where I can discuss about what you would like. Um, we'll go about it from there. Um, and then there's also, so then there's gonna be coming in the next couple months, there'll be different type of things besides just art pieces that you can purchase, such as like t-shirts, phone cases. I don't wanna like close my mind off to any type of thing that you're gonna see showing the art, because like, I, the world's literally experiencing this. Well, uh, we we have some we have some time left. Uh, I think on this Facebook Live show. Um, uh, so, so you want to talk about? Well, ask me any questions. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what you do? Yeah, I do. Oh, really? Go ahead. Well, By the way, how did you get art? Oh, that question. Well, I started collecting like thirty something years ago, maybe. Her maiden name. 
kept it simple. Like okay, that works. And then he got a nice ring to it. It actually does. It really does work. It absolutely works. Okay. Have you ever wanted to paint something? When I was in college, uh, I think my, I went to Holy Cross, I think, up in Blue. And I, and you know, I was a political science major. Okay. And I took a watercolor course. Okay. say what it's supposed to say, then I don't care what you put on that canvas. Okay. It's not going to, in my opinion, not going to sell. At least not going to sell for me. Okay. That's why you're not really about to be white. Yes. But I like the white just because your orange is the prominent color in this piece. So this is like a like pop art, as yeah. they call it. And, and most pop art pieces don't require anything other than a, a, a basic background and your focus is on the actual piece. Right. Now, if you look at other pieces here in the gallery, you know, that are not pop art related, mm -hmm. if the piece doesn't have any depth, right. then it's not gonna work. I, I and, and if you talk to artists, and we've had some artists that in the gallery space who are trained and untrained, okay. and you can see the difference. You can. And, when you, and then there's artists who will accept I'm not an artist. I can't. I couldn't paint that picture that you drew. I couldn't paint the other piece in the gallery. But I can see in that picture what uh, an eye of an artist should want to see. Okay. And I think I got a pretty good eye. I'm told I got a pretty good eye. I can imagine. Definitely. Okay. Um, Anybody else? Okay. Well, this is fun. It's fun. You know, we learn to enjoy when we have people who come in and enjoy this space. And uh, our goal here is to be supportive of people like yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and that's our goal. That's our mission. Well, I think having spaces like this is all you get. Because, um, you know, so you go to the art museum, you see something, and you think everything is so invested. Formal. It's too formal. It is. It is. I feel like I can't breathe in the art museum. Yeah, you go too <laughs> close to it. Large, they go off and they yeah. Go the or something. I was near, um, so Van Gogh has this piece called Sunflower. Mm -hmm. I love that piece. It just it speaks to everything that's inside of me. I don't know why I'm so attached to it. But I walked up to it and they're like, do not touch the piece. This is my sister. They're like, do not touch the piece. And I was like, well, what do you, I wasn't going to do this, but like now I'm intrigued. But like, I'm not going to touch it. But like, 
I just felt like, geez, I was just trying to walk by because the crowd was there, but you just gonna like lock me up. But they, they had that little barrier on the floor, right? Yeah. You can't get too close. Not to too close. I wasn't, you know how there's a crowd, there's always those pieces that are the hot commodity pieces. And I was just walking and they're like, you're not getting close. And I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't going to touch it. Yeah, what you need to do is you need to, when the pandemic is over, and since you're an artist and uh, your daughter's been quite some, quite some time, you take a trip to Paris. I don't remember the name of the museum, but it's probably the Top Museum. The Top Museum. The Museum. Oh, but oh, it, it was, it was simple how much stuff was in there. It was so simple that I, I was walking through I was saying to myself, I would just calculate. I'm like, I was, my calculation was the value of everything in this, in this space. Yeah, ridiculous. And I couldn't come up with a number. It, no, it's it's outlandish. And, but, it's, but every floor is a different master. It's worth seeing because some of the pieces are like, oh, really? That piece is what? I'm like, oh, but. You think that it's so funny. So a starry night when I wanted to go to New York for it was funny. Somebody told me how small it was. Right. Just like the size of a piece of paper. Correct. And then, and you know, when you see certain pieces, you you see it printed or it's shown or you you don't know what the size is. No one tells you it was eighteen by twenty four, nothing like that. When I heard it was the size of a piece of paper, I was like, oh, everyone's breaking their neck over this piece of paper. Eight and a half by eleven. And it's like millions. And I was like, that is craziness. Or that there was a piece in Japan that I was like a, a dot, a dot. But it sold for like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, and I was like, this is outstanding. But it happens all the time. Um, but again, that's what I also think with artists. You know, when that when that dot sold, that was when I knew like I dot. I saw it. I could do dot. this. Yeah. Imagine it's a dot on a piece of paper. Yeah, I like and it sold and that person became an instant multi millionaire. And it was in that moment I was like, I can do this. I think it was cryptocurrency. Yes, it was like, I think it was like, what, five minutes ago I asked or something like that? It was crazy. And I was like, I know people who can blow this dot out of the water. Well, you know? Well, two years ago, last year, didn't have a show out in Florida, our bank's mm -hmm. But there was a, there was a banana peel. I saw that. I saw that. And it, it sold just, for a crazy price. It was just on a canvas that sold for like $50,000. Yes. Yes. So can you imagine this should save my banana peel? <laughs> and so many people. But that's what, but that's what I mean with the importance of it's, it's who you know. Correct. It's not it's all it's not always about your talent. It's about who you know. Because let's be real, if I let's say I'm friends with, you know, Beyonce or something, and Beyonce knows I draw and she needs some cover for her art. Now let's be real. I'm sure she sent her team out to get a team that can find artists that can blow my piece out, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is that I personally know Beyonce, and she handpicked me for this piece. You know, or how many times have you seen things that we're just like, where is this? Out of every option you have, this is what you pick. But realistically, it's, it's about who you know. So for any artist, like, you know, old, young, it's, it's, it's just about being the right place at the right time for you. Well, it's interesting to say that because you know, people like Swiss Beats and, and Jay-Z and, and, and uh, other folks that's big in the music industry and, and athletes and Folks now are are really becoming serious collectors. They are. Uh, uh, and they have, of course, the Basquiat's and all the uh, the, the, the name uh, folks uh, in their collection. But folks like yourself are, are folks that they are trying to be supportive of. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are folks out there looking for art from emerging artists. There so are. You just got to stay strong and stay encouraged and. Uh, and you'll get, you'll get to where you need to go. Yeah, absolutely. That would be amazing. If Jay-Z bought a piece of me, I'm sold out the rest of my life. Yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> I would never have a free day. <laughs> yes, you are. You are the least one, and, and it's that simple. Because all you got to do is put on your website, so the people they might not let you do that, but. But, you know, somebody's going to know he bought it. Correct. Or even if they don't know, just the fact that his friends would be in his house and they know. Where did you get this piece from? Oh, and a, a local artist, and it, it takes one time. It really takes one time. Well, Lindsay, I enjoyed sitting and chatting with you. Um, Thank you. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we will maybe do something with you and not be just the future, but we'll be looking at that like this year. Do some fun. You know you're going to have. You'll be in here. We'll be around. Okay. All right. Sounds good.